uh, coffee in Sri Lanka was more of uh, you know a niche market. We will have a significant amount of uh, coffee that's coming out from Sri Lanka for export markets or for a uh, local market. Na Sri Lanka or coffee ka khuru karna wana. Apni dena gani Indo na coffee ka kiti na vati na kaam mukadi gani ka. So just because we produced good coffee in the 1860s or 1820s does not mean we can produce the best coffee in 2020 times have changed and we have to we have to catch up you saying this is 100% silon coffee how can you prove it sri lanka may be well known for its unique brand of tea but less is known about its coffee past the first coffee plantation in sri lanka was started by the dutch in the mid 1600s to meet the growing demand for coffee in europe Yet it wasn't until the British took over that Sri Lankan coffee began to thrive. We soon became one of the key exporters of coffee in the world. But in 1869, due to a region-wide blight caused by the fungus Hemelia vastatrix, all Arabica coffee crops were wiped out. Scrambling for a replacement, the British converted the remnants of the coffee plantations to tea, and Ceylon tea began to flourish. Coffee was soon forgotten about. Since then, Much has changed in the world of coffee, and Sri Lanka is ready to get back in the game. This is a story of Sri Lankan coffee: its beginning, its demise, and its rebirth. Cafes line every street of every city today, but this wasn't always so. In the 1980s, cafe culture began to form, thanks to entities like Starbucks. This, paired with the popularity and accessibility of instant coffee brands like Nescafe, took coffee to every corner of the world. Sri Lanka started experiencing the second wave of coffee in the early 2000s. At this time, Sri Lanka had already jump-started the production of commodity coffee, but imported instant coffee had continued to rule the market. But as more local coffee enthusiasts learned about the expansive world of coffee, the more they wanted to explore it, and this has created an opening in the market for a product that could change the game: specialty coffee. Specialty coffee is the highest grade coffee that is single origin or from a single estate. There is a lack of knowledge regarding both the industry and the product. अभी लंका वाले कॉफी का दाय आज करना होना अभी लंका वाले कॉफी का खुरु करना होना अभी देना करने इंडो ना कॉफी के कितने वाटी ना काम मुकाद दिखेने का अभी देना करने इंडो ना कॉफी के रसे मुकाद दिखेला अभी देना करने इंडो ना कॉफी का हदन ने कोहर दिखेला अभी देना करने इंडो ना कॉफी का हदन ने मोना आद मुले इंदल कर गने आनो ने ये दे दान ने तो मामा इस तरह गया के लेतर में लंका वे अभी टेटी ने जाता माय टी वेल तो ओन तरह ट्रेनिंग सेंटर रिसर्च सेंटर हम दे मत ये ना कॉफी वेल दी अभी हो आगान ने जाता माय अभी इधर वर्क कराने बोलो लंका वे कॉफी स्टेट अभी बाला गान रहे मिक्स प्लांट का तमा गम मले आने एक दी बे जिंजर पेपर कार्ड अम्म टी कॉफी ओक्कम एक कटे आने इतने एक दी लंका वे ऑर्गेनिक सर्टिफाई कर गंडा मारे मगर तो हमें कर्म गाहन बे तारा कटे आना वगैरह ऑर्गेनिक दे नहीं बे अपे लंका वे तीनों कॉफी एक हंड्रेड परसेंट ऑर्गेनिक के काके आने इन एडिशन टू दिस कॉफी इस हार्वेस्टेड वंस अयर इ A number of other factors affect coffee production, including rainfall, humidity, light, wind, cloud cover, soil properties, cropping patterns, and management practices. Specialty coffee is a booming market that has the potential to boost Sri Lanka's economy. In order for Sri Lanka to establish itself in this market, these issues need to be addressed. This is where MDF comes in. The market development facility. funded by the Australian government's Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade is a multicultural initiative that uses a market systems approach to achieve long-term lasting growth and create sustainable jobs for poor women and men MDF's work in Sri Lanka primarily focuses on promoting resilient tourism and supporting authentic Sri Lankan products which promote the country One of the key reasons why MDF chose to work in Sri Lanka's specialty coffee segment was to uplift the local coffee industry by leveraging the numerous beneficial characteristics the country already possesses. So, according to the altitude, Sri Lanka is divided into three separate strata. One is starting from zero meters up to three hundred meters, which is a largely blue country. 
and then uh, up to 600 meters you have the mid country and then 900 meters and above you have the um, up country uh, so all of these regions um, do promote uh, coffee plantations cultivations so if you look at robusta that's a crop that grows up to 900 meters of altitude and any coffee that grows um, above 900 meters 900 meters and above is arabica which is uh, if you take uh, the global coffee production data 70 percent of world's coffee production is um, arabica coffee and only 30 percent is robusta to date MDF support of the specialty coffee sector has generated an additional revenue of over 76 million rupees for partner businesses. This has benefited 437 smallholder coffee farmers who have collectively earned an additional income of over 8 million rupees. Though it is evident that Sri Lanka has what it takes to produce high quality coffee, a larger challenge remains. Can Sri Lankan coffee compete in a market as diverse and established as the global coffee trade? Because Sri Lanka used to have coffee um, before the rust wiped out the plantations, we, uh, geographically it's not a hurdle for us because it works in Sri Lanka. Altitudes, the microclimates, the macroclimates of the environment works for coffee. Uh, so with all of these uh, pieces of the puzzle sort of coming in together, we thought this was one of the most strategic sectors for us to work in. Raw Material is an Australian green coffee social enterprise that has worked to uplift smallholder farmers in countries like Colombia, Rwanda, Burundi, Timor-Leste and Mexico. Matt Grayley, who is currently working with MDF to improve Sri Lanka's coffee production, is certain that the country has what it takes to succeed in the global market. But the key to their success lies in the much more profitable and sustainable specialty coffee. We met MDF through our work in Timor-Leste and through collaboration we were able to achieve a lot more there for the smallholder farmers. Now we're looking to move to Sri Lanka and see what's possible to maximise the potential of their coffee industry. The value of the specialty market two years ago was 40 billion worldwide. And in five years from now, it's estimated it will be over 85 billion. So that's, that new demand is a huge opportunity for Sri Lanka to put up its hand and say, we're also a player and maybe consider our coffee in part of your lineup for all these new specialty roasters who are looking for individual characteristics and not treating coffee as a commodity. And Sri Lanka has an opportunity to say, hey, we're the, we're the Merlot of coffee. In order to be categorized under specialty, the coffee must undergo stringent testing and be graded. If you look at the premium coffee, which is again a specialty coffee according to Q grading system, the coffee has to score between 80 to 84 points. Right? And then if you're looking at a specialty Q grade coffee, then you're looking at coffees that are scored above 85 points. So if your coffee is somewhere like 90, 95, it's exceptional quality. There's not many samples like that around the world. According to the Specialty Coffee Association, the resulting coffee must adhere to certain standards. This includes green coffee standards, cupping standards, water standards, and brewing standards. So cupping and green bean analysis, these are tools that we use the whole length of the supply chain. What it is, is first analyzing the physical characteristics of coffee. So we're talking about its moisture level, looking for defects, which are all uh, defined uh, with an international standard, roasting it in a particular way and then finally cupping which is grinding and adding hot water in just a bowl, no equipment required beyond that so that it's replicatable in the same way everywhere around the world. Then we wait for a particular amount of time, break the crust. A vital aspect of specialty coffee is how it benefits not only the consumers, cafes and companies that process and sell it, but also the smallholder farmers. In Sri Lanka, 80% of specialty coffee is produced on smallholder farms of 0.5 hectares or less. The coffee produced on these farms account for about 5-8% to of the farmer's income. But MDF believes that by making information more accessible and incentivizing growers better, this could be increased to 10% of their total income. When selling to the commodity market, prices can fluctuate wildly. 
and this causes a lot of issues for the small holder families responsible for producing most of the world's coffee. So these are farms that are five hectares or less and in some years due to price fluctuations of the commodity market there is no profit for the work that they do. The commodity market is like going to the supermarket and saying I'd like some wine red or white. That's about as far as it goes. Meanwhile in the specialty market that's like having a a real opinion about the kind of wine you'd like to drink tonight, down to the grape, down to the region, down to the process. This means that one coffee is no longer replaceable with a different coffee if it's a, if it's a lower price. What it means is that the differences of Sri Lanka, the differences of the variety, will be celebrated and remunerated by the roaster who's looking for that particular characteristic. That's the big difference of the specialty market. And that will hold the price stable and a lot higher than the commodity price over a long period of time. Arabica coffee is the most popular species of coffee plant in the world. But it is also primarily a small holder crop, has short gestation periods, is easy to maintain, and has a small canopy, making it ideal for small holder farms. While specialty coffee and the culture around it are well established in coffee growing nations around the world, Sri Lanka still has a long way to go in terms of fine tuning and marketing our coffee. At the forefront of this effort are a few coffee companies working to improve the industry while building a culture that appreciates specialty coffee around it. Temple Grounds are artisan coffee roasters, offering single origin coffees, both local and imported, to the Sri Lankan market. So what we tried to do and what we wanted to do was to introduce and what we have done is a third wave of coffee to Sri Lanka. That's where people come and have a coffee uh, and it's no longer just that, they're also interested in the origin of the coffee. They want to know what's this coffee, where did it come from, um, who made it, what's special about it, what's different about this coffee from the coffee that I had last week. And that's what specialty coffee is, right? I think we try to bring the farm to the cup. So if you look at our packaging, we have the elevation where it comes from, the variety of the coffee beans, taste notes, things like that. So we try to give that to you. So you know in your head where actually the coffee is coming from. Coffee is a commodity. They sell coffee futures in the New York Stock Exchange and so on. So specialty coffee is usually priced a little bit more. And that price in return should give you better quality and better traceability. While Temple Grounds offers an experience to discerning local customers, Colombo Coffee Company hopes to open up Sri Lankan coffee to the global market. So at the moment we are working with uh, third party people, but they are working with smallholder farmers and farmer networks. But we make sure that all these are very ethically sourced and we go into the extent of going and visiting these farms time to time to make sure that things are in order and uh, we take it from there onwards. Sri Lankans are concerned about where the coffee is being sourced from but they are not really going into the minute details of finding out are these farmers being treated properly, are, are these coffees ethically sourced, are they organic, if they claim organic what's the evidence to back that up. So that is I think another important factor that you actually come and question us as well as other brands asking you saying this is 100% Ceylon coffee, how can you prove it? The number one change we would like to see is that the consistency and the quality is maintained at all levels. So if you look at Sri Lanka, we've been working with smallholder farmers for a very long time and what we have realized is that, is that the quality of the bean, it is there but we are not doing enough to maintain that quality. The cultivation process alone is not enough to buy Sri Lanka a seat at the table of globally revered coffees. Innovation is the element most coveted. I noticed that obviously tea was obviously doing very well and uh, coffee in Sri Lanka was more of a, you know, a niche market and most of the consumers in Sri Lanka drink instant coffee or, or the mass market coffee. So what we are now providing is specialty premium grade coffee which would hopefully you know, allow people who drink instant coffee to switch out. So there's a huge market potential. Also the, the middle income market as it increases in Sri Lanka, they, they're getting a taste for the finer things. Um, 
that Sri Lanka has to offer. So hence that we see a huge growth trajectory going forward for the local coffee market. So we want to show people in Sri Lanka that specialty coffee grown here is as good as anything you'd find anywhere in the world. The specialty coffee production process also comprises different processing methods. Isalama karana api gamaya katte te kopi vedi mula the mehdi samane ma katte ke yana mudala te vedi vedi mula kada dalai idicche ke di vitram mar karala the ke la ke no. Ye dunna te pasi idicche ke di genella meten te genella ke dalai verala sodala bolle ta inkala palp kala processing method tuna kada karna. Wet processing, dry processing, honey processing ke la samane langka ve yana main yana ke tamay dry processing ke yana ke yana. मिनिस्टर गेडी खाड़ा पुकामा बीम दाले वेलन वाले गेडी ये पीते हैं कसूत दगल गाने के तमाम ड्राई प्रोसेस इनके अने वेट्टे के ये दी वेट्टे के टिका गेदर करान नामारो है वे करान ना पुलवा टिका वंगेडी ये दाला कोटला हमें ना तम पाल पकेला मशीन ने करते हैं ना मशीन ने के दाला पर्मेंटेशन वेंट थी ये ला इवर वेला था माय अभी सोधा ला गाने वेट प्रोसेसिंग है क्या हानी प्रोसेसिंग है को गुड़ा लंका भी करना आए दो एक दिन कराने आरे चेरी एक दिन पहनी गाती है पाल पकला वे सोधा नेतु है एक उरा गाने दी ला हाथा गाने के तमाम हानी प्रोसेसिंग क्या नहीं थी मेकर लो the biggest uh, gap that we and MDF together realized is that they are, the knowledge is not there and no one has really incentivized the farmer to go and do this. So that's the attitude that we are trying to change in the farmer and uh, going forward we are quite confident that it will give us specialty coffees as well as commercial coffee with high quality. More and more farmers in Sri Lanka are beginning to reap the benefits from specialty coffee. मैं बैठते गोड़ा काटिए कराने कुली वैदाई दालू काटने का हिम्मत आमे करे मैं लांग का दी इधर वाके तो मैं कॉपी के ना आवधान या क्यों मुने कॉपी मिला गियार पास है मंदिर का भी आदमी पहले तीन हम गोड़ा मैं मिलांग के दी पहले पनाह के देहित हुआ यहाँ पे तो क्या लग गया हिस्सी डंके लगते होना ये के पहले पनाह के लगे हुआ एक डबल है मंगोत्र डबल है कून यक्क गहल है हमारे विनंत डरडिया टिका साफ़ तो आती ना विनंत गेडी बीमार लगते होना मंग आहिं दिन ने दंग के कॉपी करने को तो बीमार गेट मगर आप ही देख आमतौर तेवा का वाटा आमतौर मुझे लात मामा कॉफी पटांगा नो कोड़ा देदास दोला है कॉफी किलो एक गियर रुपया ला हटाई हत्ता हुए चेरी है कादे यानो एक कसी हत्ता हुए एक कसी आसुरे चेरी ये तो कोड़ा वेल ला दीप कॉफी एक रुपया ले कसी आसुरे देसी आएगी दाई यानो हाथी आसुरे � Sri Lanka is currently only at the doorstep of the international coffee stage. So not all coffee from Kenya or Ethiopia or Brazil are great, but chances are 90% of them are better than most coffees out there, right? But still you do get poor farms in Indonesia and so on. So uh, you need to educate the farmer, you need transparency, they need to be aware of uh, where they are right now and what they need to go from A to B. So what makes a cup of specialty coffee different is the care and thought and the process that's gone into creating that quality cup. So from the cherry picking model to the honey processing that we've done in our coffee processing centers to the profile roasting curve, you know, the care and the love that's gone into making that you know, beautiful cup of coffee. So there's a huge demand for this Sri Lankan coffee varieties that they have identified. Internationally, they have identified Sri Lankan coffee to one of the best. It's a flavor and aroma, the high quality. Um, that uh, coffee is coming from Sri Lanka now because of that improved, tech improved varieties, improved technologies and improved processing methods. The global specialty coffee market was valued at $35.9 billion in 2018. But it is expected to reach $83.6 billion in revenue by the year 2025. And Sri Lanka is in a position to benefit from this future boom if the industry's main obstacles are solved. As long as we can master our volumes, that is, there are MOQs, like minimum quantities that you need to export. So as long as we can secure that angle and the proper quality standards in specialty coffee market, then definitely it's a very straightforward uh, trajectory for Sri Lankan uh, coffee sector. <laughs> Though the progress has been positive so far, specialty coffee needs to be marketed to the right consumers based on a number of factors. 
For example, a country like Australia, with its thriving coffee culture, is always looking for something new. Oh, absolutely. Well, I'm enjoying a cup right now. Um, and uh, I think, you know, from a, an Australian perspective, um, uh, I think it will grow uh, and, and sell very well. Um, you push it so much up market that people say, I only want to buy that coffee because everything else is just terrible. Yes, Sri Lanka still has a long way to go. But when it does finally make its great coffee comeback, we can be sure that the eyes of the world will be on us.